So we move on to our favorite nation. Uh, <laughs> so you have a very special name for it. I would it wouldn't sound nice if I say it. So. So first of all, Pakistan is an artificial nation, and more importantly, Pakistan is a temporary nation. Temporary. Yeah, that's what it is. You have given a newer name. Uh, yeah. You have given a newer name recently, uh, which is Pakistan Occupied Punjab. All of those territories are temporarily occupied by Pakistan. Sindh is temporarily occupied by Pakistan. Punjab. See, understand the history of Punjab. What is Pakistan Punjab today? Has just a hundred or so years ago, 150 years ago, it was part of the Sikh Empire of Maharaja Ranjit Singh Ji. Now, how does that become part of Pakistan? The British broke the Sikh Empire and they gave Ranjit Singh's empire most of it to the Pakistanis. This is completely illegal. This is completely wrong. Pakistan itself should never have been created. Why did we agree to the creation of Pakistan? We, we in this room have not agreed to it. It is certain people who claim to be our leaders who agreed to this. And who benefited from this is the question. Father of our nation. The father of our nation. Yes, sir. He actually uh, tried not to, right? Agree to it. You know, there is a difference between words and actions. Indians love words. We love words. We are so impressed by words. Today, yesterday, Mr. Sharif, whichever Sharif is in power right now, Shabash Shaba Sharif. So, Mr. Shabash Sharif goes and says that we want peace with India and all Indians are celebrating. Are bhai, shabd hai ye. Ye karya nahi hai. These are not actions. Never focus on words, only focus on actions. Indians have been misled by fake leaders to focus on words. So if you come to Indians and say nice, nice words, we will start, stop, start worshipping that person, even if the person's actions are all anti-India. But the words are very nice. So, so look at Mr. Gandhi. Mr. Gandhi said that I will not allow partition. Partition will happen over my dead body. Hmm? So did he put his dead body somewhere to stop partition? What action did it take to stop partition? Nothing. He took no action to stop partition. Only words, words, words. Words don't do anything, bhai. This is something Indians have to realize. Words versus actions. If you want to understand the true nature of any leader, completely ignore their words and only see their actions. Then you will see a whole different picture. Whether it is Mr. Modi or, or it, it is anybody else from history, only see the actions. One of the greatest things about Shri Chinggis Khan is that he did not write a diary. He left behind no words. Only his actions are visible. So we understand him if we, if we know how to look at history. But there are people like Mr. Gandhi who wrote thousands and thousands of words. And today there is a whole scholarship genre which is Gandhian studies. They are all examining his words and trying to find various meanings, which is a complete waste of time. Just look at his actions. What did he do for India? I have said this on occasion that Mr. Gandhi was a British agent. And if it offends somebody, I would like to apologize to absolutely nobody. Yeah? <laughs> so, Mr. Gandhi, if you only focus on his actions, it only benefited the British. So, we're going to talk about Pakistan. Pakistan is an yeah. integral part of this. So, we all study the history of Pakistan, how it came to be and all that. But I'm going to tell you a whole different story. A completely different story that nobody has taught you. So, understand this. We spoke about Russia, the history of Russia. We spoke about, I spoke about the fact that the Russians... Uh, lost the Crimean War in the 1850s to the, to the British. Yes, there was a struggle. It was called the Great Game in Central Asia for the, uh, for the ownership and control of the Central Asian region. And the big prize was India. The British held India, but India was thousands of kilometers away from Britain. The Russians were in control of large parts of Central Asia. If they could come to India, they could take away Britain's crown jewel and, and colonize India themselves. So the key to controlling India was the control of Central Asia. And that was the great game. It, it, this entire struggle lasted more than a century. The struggle for the control of Central Asia between the British Empire and the Russian Empire. That is something no Indians are taught in history. Okay, So this is the context in which we have to understand what happened. A lot of what happened in Aksai Chi and Tibet also is part of the great game. And the great game is still continuing in a sense. Now understand why Pakistan was created. When the British understood that they are no longer in a position... See, why did the British leave India? The British had to hastily leave India because of something that happened in 1946. 
द ग्रेट इंडियन नेवल रेबेलियन द इंडियन नेवी सडनली ऑल ऑफ अ सडन स्पॉन्टेनियसली रिबेल्ड अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिश क्राउन ऑल जस्ट ओवर नाइट द एंटायर ब्रिटिश इंडियन नेवी फ्रॉम आदन टू सिंगापोर वॉज आउट ऑफ कंट्रोल एंड दे हैड ऑल रिबेल्ड एंड देवर ऑल डिमांडिंग इंडिपेंडेंस राइट and they had put up three flags on their ships they were all coordinating through wireless so they were all in com- uh, communication with each other more than i don't know how many ships the entire indian navy and they had put up three flags on each ship one was the indian national congress flag mr gandhi's flag one was the uh, muslim league flag and one was the communist flag these were the three main political parties in india at the time which were supposedly fighting for india's independence so they put up three flags then uh, there was police firing in mumbai in bombay thousands of people died your historians or teachers will not teach you this thousands of people the see, the people of bombay came out on the streets supporting the indian naval rebellion the british had them shot thousands of people died on the streets of bombay in 1946 none of your history teachers will teach you this or your textbooks will not teach you this there was similar firing in visakhapatnam there was similar firing in karachi how many indians died we don't even know so then what happens is that mr gandhi says that this kind of rebellion is unacceptable okay and he sends mr patel to bombay it was then called bombay now it's mumbai then it was called mumbai so mr gandhi sent mr patel mr sardar vallabhbhai patel to bombay to negotiate with the rebels so mr patel comes to bombay he enters into negotiations he says you need to stop this immediately and we guarantee you that there will be no repercussions no action will be taken against you if you put down your weapons now so these people they got dejected and they, within a week the entire rebellion was shut down immediately they were all arrested uh, all arrested and court martialed so mr patel whatever promise he gave was a lie actions versus words right so now understand we'll go further from this yeah so because of this the, and if the indian army had come to know what happened and if the indian army on indian soil had also participated in the rebellion within 24 hours india was free because there is no way the british were able to control india without the indian army the british control over india was not because of ahimsa it was because of the might of the british indian army the moment the indian army turns turns their back from the british it was over so when the british realized they can no longer trust the armed forces of india that's when they had to hastily withdraw from india within one year in 1947 itself now when they were withdrawing from india there was the possibility that uh, the russians were already in control the ussr was up to uzbekistan kazakhstan tajikistan kyrgyzstan all the way to the neighborhood of afghanistan which is the indian subcontinent when the british left if they left behind a unified subcontinent and if india gave access to russia to the indian ocean it was game over for the west then india will become on the on the on the side of the ussr and there will be a huge coalition and a very powerful coalition with and it will give russia for the first time in its history access to the warm waters of the indian ocean so they wanted to anyhow prevent this from happening a unified india would not listen to britain so the british created a fake artificial nation divided on the lines of religion a small nation that will always feel threatened by india if you teach them right, right things and they will always be pro west pro british and that's why they, this country this fake artificial nation temporary nation was created and if you look at pakistan history it's always been pro uk pro west and the uk has always been pro pakistan even today it is pro pakistan even today the us is pro pakistan this is the geopolitical reason why pakistan was created all this word what we are taught this freedom struggle and the do qaumi nazariya two nation three theory this is all you know it's all cosmetic paint that has been applied to the real reasons why pakistan was created so that's what it is so today pakistan we know it's a failed state it is a state that has I been mean, it's a state in decay there is uh, no law and order there is no justice there is nothing there in every nation the nation has an army in pakistan the army has a nation the army runs the country and the army is a mercenary army they serve somebody else they serve a higher power between 2005 to 2019 20 21 they were serving china the pakistanis were serving china before that they were serving the us the americans were financing and funding pakistani terrorism in india the americans financed and funded the genocide of the kashmiris in the 1990s all Ta- of that was done by the americans taliban also 
Taliban, yeah, Taliban also to a, to a certain extent. So Pakistan has always been an instrument of the West to destabilize India and to further certain geopolitical uh, agendas. For instance, in the 1980s, when the USSR, in the 1970s, late 70s, when the USSR invaded Afghanistan, they, they could have easily reached the Indian Ocean if it was not for Pakistan. The Pakistanis stopped the, the Russians from going further. So it has served the geopolitical purpose it was created to serve. It has nothing to do with the Indian uh, cultural divide and the Hindu-Muslim divide. All of that is just an excuse for, to, to create these fake artificial nations to further the Western geopolitical agenda. So Pakistan is always on the brink of disaster. It is a failed state, but it is not allowed to fail because it is important to the West. Right now, just a week ago, they have announced a $10 billion uh, loan or whatever, you know, a package for Pakistan. The Saudis are giving a billion dollars, the Americans are giving a whole lot of money, EU is giving money, France is giving money, the UK is giving money, and so on and so forth. Even the Chinese are giving some money. So everybody, all these nations want India to remain off balance by using Pakistan against India. That's the deal with Pakistan.